Something very strange is happening under the Euphrates River. It's something the Bible predicted, but most people did not think that now was the time for this revelation. Join us as we set out on the journey to reveal the dark secrets about what's happening under the Euphrates River. The River Euphrates has a massive significance in biblical history. The first book, Genesis chapter 2 verses 10 to 14 reads, A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divided and became four rivers. And the name of the third river is the Tigris, which flows east of Assyria, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Euphrates was one of the life-giving savers of the earth. Nowadays, as the river has dried up and its water level dropped a significant amount, some structures resembling prisons were revealed in the riverbeds. Many civilizations have flourished on the banks of the great river Euphrates. That stretches from the first Babylonians through Sumerians to modern civilizations. So were these structures made for the criminals as a prison in these civilizations? We could say that's the case, but there is a problem. Some strange noises are coming from the underground and are emerging through a break in the riverbed. A video capturing these mysterious sounds has surfaced on the internet, adding to the puzzle and shocking believers all around the world. Hear it for yourself. How weird is that? Who makes these sounds? Demons? Humans? Goats or cows trapped underground? Surprise. Surprisingly, some locals in the area think these weird sounds are the cries of fallen angels who were left behind and this is their cry for help. Given that we only have one video to support these claims, it's crucial to approach them with curiosity and a fair dose of skepticism. Also, it's important to know who the fallen angels these people are referring to are. These fallen angels are characterized as demonic beings trapped in dreary darkness at the Euphrates River. According to Euphrates chapter 6 verse 12, they symbolize a part of the spiritual conflict that humanity is involved in. In this conflict, we fight not against flesh and blood, but rather against the authorities, cosmic forces, and spiritual forces of evil. In the Epistle to the Ephesians, Apostle Paul writes, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Why are they bound? What does it mean to people around the world? Is this how angels sound? The reference to these fallen angels is made in Revelations. Chapter 9 verses 14 to 16 reads, It said to the sixth angel who hath the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. These four angels who have been bound by their prior transgression are also satanic angels. Since they are chained in the great river Euphrates, it appears that the particular sin occurred at a distinct period and location. Collars point out that the first significant human uprising after the Great Flood, when Nimrod led the human race to rebel against God at Babel, may have been connected to this specific group of fallen angels and its four captains. God had dispersed the people throughout the world, confounding their tongues after this. An interesting fact is that this place is located on the Euphrates, but there were some angels who encouraged Nimrod to go with this endeavor. They were the worshipped bodies of Nimrod's Tower of Babel. These angels made Nimrod build this massive temple tower unto heaven. Their rebellion was the greatest, but God didn't disperse them as he did with humans. Instead, they were restricted to the Euphrates, where they had set up camp. We can confirm this from the second epistle of Peter, chapter 2, verse 4. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment, the sinned angels are bound in the chains of darkness under the Euphrates River waiting for their judgment. The real question is when will they be free? When is their judgment? Revelations chapter 9 verses 13 to 16 reads, The sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. It is said to the sixth angel who hath a trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates, and the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. I heard the size of their army, which was 200 million mounted troops. 
The four horns of the golden altar, which are the temple object mentioned in Exodus chapter 27 verse 2, are the source of the voice John hears, speaking in Revelation chapter 9 verse 13. This voice orders the sixth angel, who carries the trumpet, to release the four angels in prison at the river Euphrates, which served as a former border between Assyria and Israel. Revelation serves as a timely reminder that God ultimately controls these events and either announces or permits each one. In the end times, evil is never allowed to get out of hand completely. This scripture clearly says that these four angels were kept ready for that very hour and day and month and year with only one goal, to kill a third of mankind, along with 200 million other mounted soldiers. Given that there were fewer than 200 million people on the planet in AD 95 at the time when John the Apostle writes Revelations, it would have been impossible to imagine such a large army. But in the current day, countries like China and India have populations that are five times larger overall. Due to this, many compare this army of 200 million horsemen to the army from the East mentioned in Revelation chapter 16, and they are instructed to kill a third of mankind. There are 8 billion people in the world, and a third of that makes nearly 3 billion people. Some believe that the angels in charge of Syria, Iraq, Turkey, and Iran are mentioned in the Bible. That those nations will be allowed to go to war, as it says of them in the passage, since these nations are spread out along the Euphrates and east of Israel. The Euphrates Valley has a long history of human evil. It is the place where Cain killed his brother Abel, the first murder. It was here where Nimrod tried to make a tower as big as the heavens, where the pride of men started, where kingdoms were established and where Babylonian idolatry originally emerged. Does this evil have any connection with the bound demons underground? While you're at it, here is another shocking fact. At the bottomless pit, even under these fallen watchers, there is something else. We read about the powerful fallen angel, similar to Lucifer in Revelation chapter 9 verse 11. He goes by the names Abaddon and Apollyon. The meaning of both names can be summed up as destroyer. He is the angel of the bottomless pit and the leader of the evil locusts. Revelations chapter 9 reads, The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from this abyss. And out of the smoke, locusts came down on the earth and were given power like that of the scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of the scorpion when it strikes. During those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads, they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates, like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails with stingers, like scorpions, and in their tails they had the power to torment people for five months. They had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in the Hebrew is Abaddon and in Greek is Apollyon. There is a chance that this might be the horses depicted in the release of the four angels. Along with the fallen angels, 200 million soldiers and horses of weird description are set out to eliminate a third of mankind. These strange horsemen can withstand natural fires that mankind won't be able to withstand. Perhaps the king of the north, who led his army into Israel in the middle of the tribulation, was Apollyon. Christians consider demons and angels to exist. Atheists and many others do not believe in them, but everyone who passes away will understand they are real. As a result, when we enter the spiritual dimension where these things exist, our ignorance will come to an end. We can say or laugh at whatever we want up till then, but the end times are way nearer than we think. Jesus said, Blessed are those slaves whom the master will find on the alert when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will prepare himself to serve and have them recline at the table and he will come up and serve them. Are we living in the end times? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys soon.